All right, we'll uh, call the Northampton Public Shade Tree Commission to order. Being Wednesday, November 2nd. Uh, public comment. Welcome. I didn't have to make comments. No? I came to observe. I just wanted to know what was going on. Well, we'll just go around and introduce ourselves. Okay, great. Uh, I'm, I'm Todd Ford, uh, Vice Chair, currently acting as Chair of Willie's Absence. Change Murray. I'm Rich Parcel, I'm Richard Ward. Terry, I'm Rich. I'm Molly Hale, I'm in Florida, I'm Molly Dyer. I'm Ralph Whistle. And I'm Jen Miller. Thanks for coming. Just observing and I was observing, I also had heard there there might be an opening and I might be interested. So oh, great. I'm just I believe there is keeping that in mind. So I see what it's like what's going on. A little bit gentle. <laughs> uh, I hear we had a, a malfunction with the equipment, so our minutes are uh, MIA. Right. Okay. And we'll get some previous uh, so who attended opening and closing? I did write that. A discussion ensued. Yes. <laughs> Lasting I think an hour and a half. Right. Um, I don't believe I have anything for the chair report, so I think we'll jump right down to the tree board report. Which all right. Um, so just to give you a lot of signals, we had a little snowstorm the other day. Mm. Last Thursday, we had two and a half inches of uh, wet, sloppy, slop snow, which caused a lot of tree damage. So we have fielded probably, I would say at least over 80, over 80 tree calls at this point for different types of tree damage. And they all tree limbs, but some larger, really larger limbs. Uh, we lost a couple of small trees. We planted one in the Holy Nursery, one in the, I don't remember the name of the street. But I'm sorry, 115. And I think uh, 115 pines. 115 pines. So two, two sweet gums. And so we've really been doing tree work that kind of clean up every day and then also trying to support the planting plant. And thanks to uh, Rob and uh, Sue Loft, Sue Loft House, I was going to say Sue and Sue, but that would be right, Sue Loft House. They actually came and picked up all the trees that we could not deliver because we were straight out on Friday. So uh, hopefully we'll be back on track this summer as well. Tree on Pine Street got broken. I went back and cut it. It was, it was brought back. So this is just one of them. Uh, I wanted to sign on this. He's going to pull me out for the third time on the North Street. We had a owner north of Woodmont got pulled out three different times. Three different times? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, it's a long story. It's still, it's still growing. It's still growing. It's still it was returned. Yeah. Three times. Yeah. Um, and um, I don't really have much to report other than the tree inventory update. Moving on to that. What was that? So, I think most of you may have seen the email that came from Zach from uh, Davy Tree, uh, basically telling telling us that they completed wards 1A, 2A, 2B, 5A, 5B, 3A, 4A, and 4B. Uh, they're cur currently working in the city parks in board 6B and 7B. So they've collected a total out of uh, 5,440 trees out of 11,200. 2,021 planting sites out of the 2,119 stumps. So for a total of 7,580 locations out of the 13,200 have been collected. Um, one of the things that I had a conversation with Zach and with uh, Deep Resources Group is how we are going to, how they're actually going to capture properties that are actually on wood lots, so in the rural areas, because this was a concern that we had originally, that they would capture so many trees in the wood lots that it would end up actually, uh, it would actually reach the 11,200 mark very quickly, because it was just, you know, wood lots, some of them are deeper than others for the city right away, so what they're going to do is when they go to a location that's, for example, on Sylvester or Kennedy Road, where there is a piece of 
property. Very clear to find his property has a house there and then collect the data from all the trees that are in the front one inch of the grade. When they go to a wood lot property next to that property, they're going to collect the data from six inch TBH trees in the grade. And then when they're complete, we're going to revisit uh, what our numbers are. And there's some places actually, because what they did, you know, places like Route 66, they actually ended up doing that type of formula, but they only collected trees that had a DBH of 25 inch or greater, which excludes a lot of potential public shade trees. They also did a, uh, you know, obviously if there's a high risk tree, they, they uh, or a tree that was uh, in danger of failing, it was noted and collected in the inventory. But anything less than 25 inch DBH, it was held in trees. We're going to have to, when, we're, when they're done with their data collection and it's tallied up, we're going to have to go back and have a meeting. And uh, if they're not at the 11,200 uh, mark, we need to circle back and kind of pick away the places where we think we can actually increase, you know, kind of give a, a real true reflection of the tree. Mitch, are they doing like 25 dBH? Did you say on the, the outskirts? No, they're not going to use that 25 dBH. It's going to be 6 inch. That is a piece of property that has a house on it, it's going to be one inch and greater. So they collected the one inch and greater in all the places where it was very clear, for example, where you can plant things, tree belts, uh, especially the one and a half mile radius area where they collected everything. With the exception of rural places like Central Route 66 have wooded areas, they used that 25, that 25 inch deviation. They're going to have to come back and we have to look at all those again. And that one, I want to make sure at least a one and a half mile radius that we have everything that's collected. One inch or greater. But it also it's a numbers game. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't I don't want to blow the numbers out of uh, I don't want to end up I want to collect as many trees as possible. Um, so as much as the city as possible. As much as the city as possible. But I don't think we're gonna get the eleven thousand. Once they get up to Sylvester and Kennedy Road, that might change all that. A lot of, a lot of trees. So, um, will, will you be able to provide us with access to the? Yes, I actually got. There's an email that was floating around today. Um, I will actually try to forward that to all of you about the actual um, address that you can actually look at uh, the actual tree. Uh, some reason they've asked the technical questions tonight. Andy Keeter only works twice, two days a week, so he's been trying to work with their technical, their tech team, so hopefully it gets resolved. Were you uh, surprised by any particular numbers? They just jumped out? Okay. Uh, no, I'm not surprised at the numbers, I guess. I'm surprised, though, I, I you know, for example, I'll give you an example of uh, 73 Warner Street. There's a huge, not huge, but it's 34 inch big enough DBA sugar maple. It has two co dominant stems, it has a cable in it, and one co dominant stem that is basically arching over the front of the house and the utilities, uh, private utilities. It's completely rotted. So they captured that. They sent me an email and said, This is a high risk street. We need to go to immediately. It's going to have to come down. Well, that was two days before the snowstorm happened, so I'll get the cables over it together. So when I was there examining the tree, I was just kind of looking around, and I looked at the 77, which is the next house, and I went to the tree, and the tree is another sugar, old sugar maple, and it's probably I think it's 40 inches to be used. And it has two, it had, it's a multi-stem tree, but it originally started as two co-dominant stems, and then where the crown attachment is, I mean, where the, uh, you know, the crown attachments to the trunk are just kind of has all this branching. And it has a huge cavity in the middle of it. And also it's cable. They didn't capture that as being a high aspen tree or a high risk tree. Because it is, you know, it's, it's hollow. You can actually see inside of it. There's actually another tree growing inside of it. So those, those are the kind of things that, you know, they're obviously not going to capture everything. But to me, it was pretty evident that both those trees were very high risk trees. They need to be removed because of the targets that the 
blow them, you know, feed them property, test games, cars. So, and I, and I need to go back and look at all that. So basically, they're going to give us this data dump, all this information. And they're going to say that you know, X amount of trees have to be removed. And then I'm going to have to go back with Tony to look at all these trees to actually either get an occurrence with them or not an occurrence with them. So I think it's going to be, uh, it'll be fine. It's just going to be a little bit of, a little bit of backtracking. So, but they've been, I think they're doing a really good job. You're, you're 
kind of primary point person between Tree Northampton and Rich DPW? Or? Yeah, exactly. I, I go back to, I mean, I'm sort of like a foreman out in the field. And I know, I ask for trees, and I know where each tree goes in the morning. I, I make sure that they're met by the right people. I think that being even better and more robust um, volunteer group would be great if I could duplicate. But right now, each I think each morning when we set out, I'm pretty much there. And if not shovel, just knowing where the things are. Yeah. I mean, you might want to think about bringing someone else on to duplicate so we don't have to take out key managers on yes this. yes i mean i'm very aware and i, I think that, that that this year has been a little different than last and it's a really something that has yet to be fully worked out is that last year we had 80 people volunteer 30 of those were high school students um and it was a huge educational opportunity for a lot of people this year we have fewer volunteers planting more trees each. So, um, depending on the really, I mean, it's their person learning more. Is they, the education is still there. The education is still there, exactly. It's still very much there. And in fact, this weekend, I think three or four of the homeowners will be planting trees with us. So it's not like it's just a small group of people going out. But, and I agree with Dick, but the education is still there. And uh, this weekend, there are some people who are really eager to not weekend, I'm sorry, Friday, they have been planning. There's at least one person really eager to learn much, much more that came to the training. And uh, you know, it's a long block, there's a lot to learn. It takes a long time. I'm gonna, I, I will be planning a tree with Bob Goss, or through a few trees on uh, Thursday. And so, my being able to go out with Bob, I can learn. Uh, so, the education is going to Last year, moved out of the city and still came back to plant trees. And, and wow. Yeah. wow. And, 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 and I think will be an ongoing huh. person who has some, um, some things to add to us if she studies plants. Hey, Brian. Now you're back. I don't have no ways. So, yeah, I, th I think what's happening is that we are being developed as kind of poor people who have a fairly deep interest. We've also had high school students. I planted a whole bunch of trees with high school students. Right? Okay, cool. Cool. Great. Other than the setback trees, have there been non-setback trees? No, we've uh, no. We probably and I talked last weekend. I believe you left me in that group of trees that I have to actually take safe. Yes, yeah. trees that are the trees in the public right away. We're trying to honor all the stuff I have first and then trying to revisit the locations that we plant plant the public right away in the spring that we plan to finish with the weather kind of went south. So that so so in two weeks on pace we'll be done with the setback trees. And really when we do setback trees occasionally, just so clear, we do occasionally plant a um, a tree belt tree if it's like right in the area and it's especially if it's a tree someone you know, call, ask for someone really looking after it, adjacent or whatever. Um, but uh, we will be hopefully planting the honey locusts, really big root balls. And uh, I think, Rich, you, you would thought you would, you would bring an auger down. So it's kind of a shift. Those in the front of that antique store got included. Yeah. Yeah. So. Very rough. Yeah. It, it is. You know, I had trouble driving the stakes there. The stakes began to break. Yeah. Yeah. The auger. The auger may not do very well. That's the back on the fence. Mm -hmm. We'll try it. We'll the stakes there on the trailer and try it out. We could just loosen up that little little strip. Yeah. So there are five stakes down there. It's probably a gas tank. <laughs> right. There are five stakes down there. I, I, I don't know who planted Strong, Strong Avenue or Street. Is that, is that you? No. Well, which side? The one on the the, the, the one on uh, the taller buildings. Uh, that was from Virgin. Yeah. That was done when they bought the uh, eighties. Oh, really? They're fairly old. Eighties. Okay. Well, I, I do 
you go back and forth to think about it, you know, it's kind of a model is maybe the best we can do downtown. I, mean, I know people want diversity. They, some people don't like the little leaves to shop them because they, they move. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> they blow in their places. Uh -huh. But uh, you know, Strong Avenue looks good. I, one little note about Strong Avenue, just like you know, kind of off the subject, but if you look at Strong Avenue, there's one locust there that still has all its leaves. And then if you look at the root flares of them all, it's the only one that's root flares showing. I don't, right know it's, I don't know if it's connected. It but is. All right, great. Thank you. Anything else with Tree Northampton? I have one more. With Tree Northampton? Yes. Great. That's the yeah. It is. Um, so I got this uh, update from Sue this morning. Some of this might be redundant, but I'll just go over these seven or so bullet points that she provided. Uh, Eleven volunteers in Rich participated in a tree leader training on the 22nd. Uh, and that included Jay and Jen. Uh, six lieutenants were into the training. And as Rob said, 35 setback trees have been planted by 50 volunteers. Uh, let's see. Freedom of Tantrum is communicated via Gmail with homeowners alerting them to tree deliveries and debates and security access to those people. Mm -hmm. uh, sign up Jesus. What's that? Mm -hmm. Water. Oh, uh, water, sorry. Access to water. Mm -hmm. uh, sign up genus is being used to create volunteer schedules. And then uh, they're confirming the email. That's just their process. Uh, photos are being taken of volunteers produced on the web. Volunteer shifts continue on Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays through the number 20. And lastly, uh, Tree Northampton will be sending property owners instructions on marketing, mulching, and requesting that they please do not prune. We hope to provide help with pruning the young trees. Yes. Great. Excellent. Well, so, just to add in part of your report, yeah. it looks like the volunteers will plan at the end of two weeks, 75. That's awesome. Does that take care of kind of the, the backlog that you have <coughs> with the requesting? So. Yeah, it, it takes care of all the trees that are requesting for set vectors, but it doesn't touch the uh, tree belts, which is something that there are a whole bunch of trees waiting results yeah. and okay. that may ha not happen some of them may happen this fall we're going to try to plan them all oh great okay well then that's great i think we need to clean up the old ones you're only going to order them over this one right right so we really right. so, oh, so we can work until the ground freezes and just uh, you know i guess maybe that's mid-december okay. you have to you own know. the property to request the tree go on Yes, because you have to agree to take care of the tree after. What if it's in the public road? No. But just tell them the tree's going to be planted there. That's it. There is a form. I mean, if you want a tree planted in the public right? Can what? you have revenge based tree plantings? <laughs> <laughs> so the there is, yeah, there, there is a form to actually request a planting in front of your house in the tree belt if yes. you don't have one. Right. Okay. But typically, you know. But even if there's no belt, if the right of way, yeah, the right of way goes beyond usually the curb. It depends. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it, it depends. There are places where it goes. If there's no sidewalk, it goes 20 feet. Down. Right. So yeah. and 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 I, I did meet with people at Orchard Street today, for example. There, they've been trying to get trees on their street for like 15 or 20 years. They, they, they a constant effort. They're like working toward it, not entirely successful. And they have a over three foot tree belt that has no wires on it. So when you talk about like over the yeah. there we have like a, at least a handful or more, maybe a dozen people who want trees on their street, got the tree belt. And so that's a place where uh, the request might be 
just what kind of global we call people want our street yeah, trees. So I gave you one of the forms there. Good. So I mean, I would think that we could work with uh, Tree Northampton and, and the mayor to formulate kind of an end of season press release pushing all the trees that were planted and, and use it also as an invite to get a, get that second wave going so that you guys don't you know sit on your laurels for too long. Well, the second wave is really important because this you really have to sign them up. This kind of this winter and you can't wait till spring. Yeah, no. Yeah, so as we did last year, if you kind of, you kind of, you know, Rob just kind of made a grassroots effort yeah. to, to get knocking on doors, <coughs> dropping flyers. Yeah. The flyers I think really helped. I got yeah. a lot of emails from the flyers, so even if you don't make contact with the yeah. folks, the door hangers are been successful. They've been more successful with the setback plan than they have with the watering. No, uh, but it didn't work. that may be because of the climate, the weather. I don't know. But I'm totally to in agreement with Todd that, that we need to advertise what we've done yeah, and yeah. that more people will, because yep. it, getting people to agree to take the trees, to, to want the tree, takes a lot of time. And it's beginning to, as people see trees out, mm -hmm. especially the back, requests of them and people see, oh, they ask their neighbor how to get that tree. And to go around town, the trees that the town is putting out are, are almost all of the shade trees that are planted are these trees. And you don't see too many shade trees being planted in yards by private. Uh, I think too, as we go along, we should really try to incorporate that neighborhood groups yeah. and get a person to yes. go out and get the coordinator to get the trees. By neighborhood, it'll be ongoing, and, and that causes sometimes little niche, niche areas to have many more trees, like the end of North Street going down Lincoln, and on the base there are a whole bunch of trees, and that's because people spoke to each other. And there are other little like places. That, uh, one little one block street you just planted six trees to the neighbors' all It's very nice. Correct. Is that something that Tree Northampton would be working on, do you think? They are. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I and mean, they, they are capable of and, and will and are working on them. So, for instance, the Orchard Street people that I just spoke to today were asking them to get a little more organized and they send information to Tree Northampton. Further speak to them about the work. Just so you guys know, there is a fifth <coughs> core organizer of Tree Northampton. I don't know this person. Uh, Theo Sweet. Uh -huh. Sweet, yep. So yeah, it's, 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 it's my daughter after the slow. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Why? Well, I, well, I, I know her. I know her. You know her? Yeah, you vetted her? her. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She, all right. She's uh, <laughs> just finishing her uh, degree in Vermont Law and Environmental Law and Policy. And, uh, She's helping Tree Northampton with some of the like 5013 type of issues. More kind of, you know, they, they actually just of course environmental uh, uh, nonprofits and have four of them. So she knows more than the rest of us. Awesome. That's good. Sorry, you may have mentioned her name before, but I thought it was. No, that's all right. You don't have to say what's name. We also had a neighbor come out from the planting last week. Thanking us for all the effort, and she saw the publicity, and she's seeing what's happening around the town. So she, she's got big trees in her yard, so she can't put any in. But she's grateful to see what's happening. Yes, yeah, I, I really noticed. I have to say, it's become it's becoming noticeable. People are I, I, most places where I go, people I, most people notice. I'm not noticed because of the tree It's because of the tree They don't. They, they notice they don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. And actually, I've spoken to uh, Tree Northampton about uh, yard signs. And you know, we would first work that out, whether it just says what it would say, the way we have in the past with Rich. And, you know, something that just says this tree was provided by the city of Northampton. And 
thank you, by both volunteers, would be a really powerful message. Because people, people literally don't know. I mean, they're living right next to the tree. They don't know. And even the people that we're planting the trees for are sometimes a little vague about that. Mm -hmm. I can't really pay for this. Who paid for it? Yeah, I think it's important because it shows commitment other than the town mm -hmm. spending money as a constituent. Let's mm -hmm. Let's move on to the annual report review. Okay, I don't know that I need the full 10 minutes, but uh, I'm pleased to say that I went through. This is our 31st meeting, this is the first we had in May 2015. So I went through our all of our minutes and combed through them. And I sent to Todd and Lily a draft of our annual report. Um, and it is longer than I originally anticipated. It's uh, what, seven pages, which includes our photo at the end. And um, both Todd and Lily agreed that we could condense more. But at least we have something that sort of compiles like all the stuff we've been doing. Yeah. Well, at, the, at the very least, leave this and maybe create like an executive summary yeah. you know, mm -hmm. front and back with mm -hmm. some you know, more graphics. But you know, all, all, you know, all that is, is good stuff. It should be available, I think, you know, on the website or yeah. supplemental mm -hmm. if, any, if anyone's interested. Yeah, I offered um, my mentions that I, I'd be willing to be useful to them formulate it into a PowerPoint with, again, images as well as some text. Um, I think everybody was here last time, but, and, and I'm totally open to this being edited and reorganized, but basically um, I uh, included in the establishment our mission that we worked on last winter, that language, um, noted a bit about the commissioners in our meetings, where public information about us can be found, and then about the budget, which this was a learning for me. I probably should have known, but I was thinking that <laughs> we had our own budget, but it's not North Carolina's DPW tree program, is what the official budget is. Um, I included our efforts on alliance building. People already have one, two, three, 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 thirteen guests we've intentionally reached out to. Uh, I talked a bit about our public outreach, which included our survey and some of those results. Uh, and then, this is something I added since our last meeting, that we decided, this was early last year, on four priority areas for 2016. So tree inventory, tree ordinance, public engagement, and our mission statement to get real clear about what our mission is and then work from that. Um, I just want to make sure that, that the tree planting information I have is correct. What, what I thought was accurate was 112 last fall, 67 this spring, and then 87 on the way this fall. Does that sound about right? 87 on the way this fall? Yeah. Yep. That sounds about right. In 67 from the spring? That was yep. okay. So that, that's a total of... Um, well, we had a total of 180 trees, I think, from the fall oh, into the spring. Yeah. That's a total of 266 public shade trees that we have, will have planted by the end of the season, just in a year and a half. And then lastly, the other figure that's I just want to... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I also included, um, as was suggested after last meeting, that uh, we received ninety dollars per caliber inch from residents for the removal of public trees on their property. These mitigation monies are deposited in the municipal tree fund established to promote and propagate future public shade tree plantings and care. And to date, the amount reimbursed to the city is approximately fourteen thousand. Okay. All right. Uh, if it would be useful, I'd be happy to send this out to the whole community now. If you guys want to look at it, or yeah, her. Yeah, all right. 
And is there going to be an executive summary made? Yeah, I think the uh, Lily yeah. and I, Marilyn, okay. would get together and pick up the red pens. And yep. I think Lily has some pictures too she wanted, and mm -hmm. maybe grab some from the Tree Northampton folks or whatever, and just make it, you know, maybe three pages with pictures, you know, tone, get the text way down to. Mm -hmm. you know, so then we can. And she does give that to the city council. Yeah, exactly. And, then, yeah. Uh, and the idea, I think, Lily wanted to wait till at least the majority of the assessment was done, the, the tree assessment was done. Um, so you know, I don't think there's any massive rush to it. But I think it would be very nice to include the full text somewhere where we can access it. Uh, because uh, for me, just to keep track of what we're doing, sometimes I don't want to do that. Yeah, I want to give a shout out to Terry because he's been working minutes from the website and it was just I just loved I, I took a few evenings and I just went through sifted through all of them it was just great I, I know Lily has praised you before but I really appreciate the great job of capturing the minutes and yeah. what's going on in the news um, so thanks <laughs> Thank you. are you going to turn them into children's book and, you know, <laughs> <laughs> we could great. <laughs> so yeah, once the tree inventory is done, then uh, Lily thought that would be better to include all that information, and we can have some graphics for that too, um, and provide that to City Council by the end of the year. Yeah, yeah. I, I personally don't think we should wait till it's completely done because that's a whole separate. Okay. You know, in, in my opinion, uh, maybe Lily know. and I haven't talked about, it, but I think it would be beneficial to get this out when the assessment is. You know, 70% done or whatever it is, and then you know, when the assessment's done, that, that's a worthy meeting event in and of itself. I think um, to kind of talk about where we stand on um, the next steps. Um, so I'd kind of rather separate it out a little bit, but we can have that discussion next time. Okay. That's it. Great. Nice work. Excellent Thank job. Thank um, And. Do we have an update on the, the tree list and the guidelines? I um, haven't had time to do it yet. I, I can probably have it something before um, the next meeting. I'll try to we'll crack the whip. Yeah. I'll get somebody else to <laughs> do my work at my regular job. <laughs> I mean, I'm kind of excited about it. It, it was a really interesting project for me. So, yeah. Are you guys working on that too? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you calling it tree guidelines? Uh, a recommend. I thought we were going to do like recommended trees for. I think it's guidelines. Guidelines, yeah. Yeah, and then then we'll send it out to uh, planning mm -hmm. and other departments for comments and thoughts, and see how we can get it incorporated into codes and regulations. Mm -hmm. But so my suggestion would be once it's completed, it should probably go over to the mayor. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Let's use the Vernon Advisory Commission to the mayor. The mayor. It's sort of like the actual uh, the, uh, year end report, the annual report. That should actually, once it's been agreed you know, upon by the commissioners, Mayor would say, you may say something, you may say nothing. So we're probably in a couple of letters, we'll say that we'd like to report this to the city council. Um, and we'd like to have you report this to the city council. This is our conversation. Mm -hmm. And you can probably be directly at odds with laughing at or smiling at me there. I would try to use the same avenue all the time. Of course. Thank you for the reminder. You're very welcome. We never do that. Can I look into the camera? <laughs> Great. Uh, all right, we're moving right along. Any other business not anticipated? I've got something. Please. So, uh, a little while ago, Rich asked me to, um, I came to the, his office and we looked at the plans for the Pleasant Street 
and um, gateway plantings with bioswales and redo of some of the sidewalks and stuff. And um, this was the uh, just for everyone's reminder, we definitely looked at them up on that table and okay, right, stage. right. So I um, got a uh, I was concerned about some of the plant choices and um, particularly there's in the bioswales there's a lot of perennials so um, I uh, rich gave me a shrunk down copy and I took it home and um, <coughs> I spent a little time with it and I made some comments and sent them back to rich and rich for them and um, the niche is it niche yeah. it niche engineering um, I guess I could make copies of this if you uh, <coughs> provided responses to my comments and um, <coughs> uh, it was good that they provided responses to the comments I still have um, concerns over the plant material um, did you suggest changes I did suggest changes I could have spent hours you know redoing their planting and kind of that's after reading through this again more closely that's kind of what they're interested in us doing and I just feel like they've got a highly paid landscape architect on this team and it's I don't think they actually have one if you read that I believe what they're saying is they don't have a landscape architect on staff they're using design services from somewhere else oh. I think I oh, I, I thought they I had a land, because I asked about a horticulturist, and they said they didn't have that, but they did, wait, let me find this. Maybe I misread it, but I don't have it with me to, to read it up there on my desk. Could I ask a clarifying question mm -hmm. while you're looking for that? So, we also had our own comments as a commission, more focused around the trees, and I remember some issues with, I believe there were dogwoods. <laughs> yeah, those were all... Oh, were they? Yep. So they, I, didn't, they didn't comment. I, I didn't see though. anything didn't comment on the dog that dealt with the trees. On the, the amelanchier, the shed, but the, the trees. Oh, well, that 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 was an email that was sent by Lily, I believe. That wasn't sent by through me. That was sent from from Lily to Wayne after that meeting. Uh, I believe after so the that meeting we actually looked at everything and. We, Comments and then Jen, I asked Jen to go for the comments based upon what she was in reference to the file spells and the, the multi. I'd have, have to say, unfortunately, this project is it's 100% design, so they're willing to actually change the plant material. Yeah. But the problem is, is that it's how the thing's being funded. Right now, it's only half funded. There may be plenty of time to make more changes. <laughs> we, we do, but you know, I I'm just a little baffled at the meeting I had. I was more baffled about the financing of the project and the fact that they were they were not sure when the project was going to start, whether or not they were the whole project was half this funded through Mass Mass Massworks. Yeah. Yeah. Massworks yeah, is uh, that's great. There's a uh, Passports, I think that's DOT, which is two different funding sources, and it's a little confusing. And one of the things that actually was going to be removed from the project is the uh, stormwater, uh, the stormwater tree boxes mm -hmm. because of their cost. Is and so they initially came back to the table when I had to speak for myself, CFAR, um, we fight the day of the they actually looking to actually cut plant material to save money. That's why this is the first thing. It's basically it's a project to actually make the border more industrial friendly and safe. Um, and Wayne's comment was absolutely not. You know, I mean, we're, we're going to get crucified if we remove the plant material. That's it's really a key element of this whole project. So I don't really know where the funding stands based upon where the project's going. I believe some of the project money has to be expended 
after the project plan has to be extended by June 30th of 2017, which is a problem for trying to put a contract together. Yeah. Well, regardless, I think just given their response, which seemed to be very specific around Jen's comments, yeah. I would like confirmation that the comments that we as a commission generated that were, with your memory, submitted by Lily to Wayne were provided to niche engineering that they have those and that they are apparently still formulating the response. Well, I'm going to have to get to my email to look. Yeah, well, it doesn't have to be now, but I'm just saying, you know, if this project is kind of on pause, then I just want to make sure that that, that communication system was closed up. Maybe we can figure out a way to make this a little bit more streamlined for the next project. So this project could start next spring, but essentially, but it depends on the funding source. Yeah. And if you have half the project, one you have half the pleasant street completed, right. half maybe it's one side. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is, is there still the time opportunity for us to? There is time to comment. It's 100% design, so but there's time to actually change the plant material. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. we can't add any. I don't believe uh, trying to add any cost to the project. That won't happen mm -hmm. because there, there is a lack of money. So making swap outs for plant material is probably the best thing that we're going to do to do the proper plant material that's in there. And what about the um, what about the you know instead of the boxes? You know, there's like a lot of other, there's like bump outs that are lower and, you know, I mean, that I could I think the boxes are going to be transformed into structural soil. That was, that was the conversation. Oh, okay, they're transferred. They're, oh, they're cool. going to change them in structural soil because it's obviously cheaper. a lot cheaper. Like a lot cheaper. Yeah. And, and we get a much bigger tree. Yeah, oh, that's great. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Right. So I guess my, my question is, um, I, I couldn't, I guess it, it said, I mean, one of my comments was um, many of the plant choices are too large for the setting, uh, a lot of the Latin names weren't correct. Does this firm have a horticulturist on staff who is looking over the planting and designs? And the answer was the plants were selected to provide a diverse palette um, and use of appropriate sized vegetation to slow and absorb stormwater runoff. Uh, yes, nursery stock is sold by Latin names. Alternatives, varieties of the species identified on the landscape plan will be considered. While the designer is confident that the species are selected or appropriate, if the commenter would be able to provide markups on the landscape plans that provide specific plant selection changes that are desirable, the designer can incorporate those recommendations into the revision. And that, so the, to, you know, that just seems like unpaid work. You know, and I don't think that the plant material is appropriate. They had like these beds face west, and they're in an urban area, and they had just for example Tiarella. Tiarella is this like woodland special little you know plant. There's no way Tiarella is gonna, and this is like pretty classic for large uh, projects, municipal, uh, and even large. Um, you know, non-residential projects that these, you know, the the engineer, like the the engineering is correct, you know, and important. But we get, we spend, we throw all this money at plant material, and half of it dies, or it's in a place that snow's going to get plowed, or you know. So I just, I don't know what the next step would be. I mean, I could spend hours designing beds for them. I think one of the issues you know? is that they, because of this. Because the design is 100% complete, mm -hmm. for them to actually hire a landscape architect mm -hmm. or a water culturist to do work, mm -hmm. they exceed what the whole hours are. Right, got so it. So that's why okay. they're asking for, oh, okay. in, you know, some input mm -hmm. uh, from us. Mm -hmm. Actually, to circle back to Todd's question, we got an email dated here, March 28th. Old Wayne attached to the observations and recommendations from the Tree Commission regarding the Plymouth Street Design Project. Please note that we very much uh, appreciate having the landscape plan to review since it was very hard to pull in all the pieces of information together from various plans. Three members of the Commission can meet with Alpha on Tuesday, April 
12 to 4 p.m. Since you don't have a form, uh, we won't post that at open meeting. Can you please meet your office? We will have to have, uh, there are any summary remarks from March 7th public forum, please send the link to the So it was sent. Yeah. To, I do not call some the response. Right. So, well, the other thing, and, and, and obviously, I think, you know, our purview around street trees is probably, uh, it's pretty narrow, and these are more perennial mm -hmm. landscape based. So I don't think uh, as, uh, as a commissioner, you should be volunteering your time on that. But it, it does get to a point to point to, to something in the process that you know the, the city doesn't have a landscape architect or all the ports of us reviewing this stuff. Mm -hmm. So um, you know if an engineering firm has a designer uh, which is code for not in LA right. you know making a planting plan and somehow in the city's review process there should be some accountability for, for, for bringing on a landscape yes. architect to review yeah. this. Yeah. Well I think you know again this is one of those one of those things where, you know, this is like the hill. This is the, the Hail Mary pass has been thrown already, and we're at the very end. So mm -hmm. these types of projects will no longer happen this way. Mm -hmm. These kinds of projects will come uh, to my desk, and then you know, for comments from planning as well, how it should happen mm -hmm. before this project is completed. It gets that far. Yeah. Uh -huh. Before it gets that far, that the actual project is 100 percent designed. And then this, you know, a whole lot of second things. Plan material needs to be changed if we don't agree with this and so on and so forth. So we could, I was going to comment on uh, something that the, that the, the plant list isn't finished or isn't, um, is that there's only one if the commission, if the commenter has, uh, there was another comment about, um, I had marked this all up and then I left it on my desk, so I printed out another. Um, there was another comment about, um, the planting beds, that they, they could, um, you know, continue to revise them, like the, hasn't it hasn't been totally firmed up yet so but uh, you know I guess we just have to next time we hopefully we'll get in sooner because what happens is you know it's kind of like we wanted uh, sweet gums and we went and got sweet gums and we didn't realize that they were columnar you know it's kind of like the same way when you're to me when you're planting trees and shrubs and you know, perennials in an urban setting there's like a really narrow set of varieties that are going to be appropriate and survive. I just hate to see like all this money being spent on plant material and then I know that you know half of it's not going to survive. You know? So it's like a waste of money. So, um, so, uh, so planning boards usually have on call, if the city doesn't have an engineer, they have an independent engineer on call that they that they, uh, well, they don't have to go through an RFP because it's the uh, applicant's money, but in this case, it's the public money, so you have to go through an RFP to secure uh, a, a, an engineer on call to independently review plans. It seems to me that the DPW slash planning department should have a landscape architect on call to review plans that are prepared by the city or by mass DOT or some other subcontractor to act as an independent reviewer for those landscape plans. And you can certainly apply mm -hmm. to the RFP process. Well, I don't know, I'm not willing to take a gay bar. Yeah. But I was just going to say, I'm not sure that that's what I would recommend to review that. Yeah. yeah. Someone should be. A landscape designer or a well, professional I mean, horticulturist. I mean, landscape architects, are good at uh, you know cut and fill and you know larger engineered projects, but they have very little training in plant material. And you know this person pulled up a list of plants that 
Yeah. Good for wetland bias whales and said, okay, here we go. Yeah. Well, the, the, the city could easily craft the RFP to say, shall include a landscape architect and a certified board culturalist mm -hmm. or whatever the case may be as a, as a team to review this stuff. Mm -hmm. But I mean, that's probably where it actually should actually happen is in the, in the, in the RFP for design services. That's really where it that should be placed, I think. Mm -hmm. Because in reality, what you're going to end up doing is the burden of this type of work really should be put upon the actual people that are designing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you've created an RFP, you have a developer coming in and saying, I want to develop uh, X, Y, and Z properties, this is what I'd like to do. Their, the burden has to be put on them to actually come with the design, and then it would be reviewed by city engineer, myself, and probably someone from this position. Mm -hmm. I mean, it probably wouldn't cost that much to actually do a case by case project if you wanted to hire someone. Design services that don't require a, uh, an RFP for say to use quotes, so you can just get someone to say, you know, what's, what's going to cost you to review this plan? They're, all, they're traditionally, you know, 100% engineer focused. Right, of course. Right. And that's, that is classically what's happening. And I, it happens everywhere. But as a person who is kind of on the other end that has to come and fix stuff at the end, you know, I mean, two years out, yeah. it's, you know, it's frustrating to see the amount of money that's well, dumped on a project. Right, and this, and seems to, this seems to happen a lot because there seems to be a lot of money available for a lot of pieces of money available to do these projects. And the planning department has been very good at uh, taking these projects and actually paying for them with piecemeal funds. But the problem is, is that each money mechanism is tied to the test is going is has certain deadlines, certain amounts, yeah. certain things. Um, so you have these designs that are put together, but then the funding sources become available. So they get shelved for half Becomes ancillary because you're really there to do traffic counting and raise prospects. So, I'm trying to, one of the other things that this kind of rolls into that is I'm trying to work with Maggie Chan, the traffic engineer, to actually uh, incorporate into their our city's traffic counting manual actually the tree plantings. And actually, she's actually um, looking into and doing some research uh, about other communities that have uh, traffic. Uh, manuals and actually do they utilize much larger cities do they utilize a uh, whole section of plant material to actually assist with the traffic county thus this is what I think part of the pleasantry project was was to narrow it down and create that wall effect plus have the uh, you know the bump up and the bump up slash raised crosswalks so it's a lot to digest and I guess so Anything else? I was just wondering if we have any information on the vacancy programs. We haven't, uh, I guess, interviews have not been conducted yet. I'm not aware of anyone that has applied, uh -huh. but uh, unless there's someone in this room that has talked with someone. I did speak, I did email, um, converse with a, a lady uh, who was a retired landscape architect, I think, actually, who wanted to volunteer at the time. So I can't remember her name, it's very late, but also her. Uh, she's from Northampton, she lives in Northampton, and she was willing to volunteer. Actually, I believe she was uh, looking at the uh, treenorthampton.org, uh, and it got her to the public shade tree commission, and I suggested that um, if she's interested in volunteering, that she could obviously volunteer if she would like to treat her in the or we're also looking for a new public shade tree commissioner. So if you're interested, please uh, uh, you know, go to our website, take a look at what our mission is. And if you're interested, please come to me for a public comment. Uh, you know, we look back for the afternoon every uh, the first uh, third Wednesday of the month. So, uh, 
what is the process, Rich? Um, if somebody's interested, who do they contact? Mayor's office. Contact the mayor's yep. office. Yep, the mayor's office. They'll fill out an application. Um, the mayor's office will review, do a background check on the person, review their credentials, search your Facebook so yes, search your Facebook. <laughs> okay, yeah. In case you say something bad, you know, and, uh, or your Twitter feed, or your Instagram, or your Snapchat, whatever it may be. Look at you. Yeah. Check. Uh, and, uh, check your connections. Check, check your connections, right. yes. And then, uh, no, the, we mayor, don't bother. the mayor will uh, usually forward the applications to me to review, and then we decide that collectively when we put this board together, the commission together, if we want it to be, who we want it to be. Phone interview or was in person. Most of them were in person. Is, are you aware of any deadline or no. is there a date by which we're going? No, I no. No, I don't believe that we actually. Uh, we haven't really got that. We haven't got that far. I mean, I think if uh, these are open. I mean, his will be open to it still. Yeah. Uh -huh. But there's not. I don't think this, you know. There's not what I would say active lobbying. Fill the position, so the act of lobbying really would be uh, from people that we would know that would be interested. You know, from us to act a lot more to lobby someone else that might be interested. Maybe there could be someone that's in treatmentpainting.org that might be interested. Um, you know, you know, we obviously the U.S. commissioners kind of agreed to kind of a direction of the type of person that, or they, you know, gave your thoughts about who you thought should be filling that seat based upon the strengths that this commission already has. So that should be taken into consideration as well. The other thing I wanted to ask is um, uh, to update our website. Because yep. I, I feel like there's some things that we could update, not only that this position is vacant, because now it lists all seven of us, including Andrew, but yep. there are some other things like a link to Tree Northampton, because they have a link on their site. Um, if, you email, if you email me the things you'd like to have changed, I will take care of it. Okay. I'll okay. have Andy take care of it tomorrow. If you can do it, if you can send it to me today or tomorrow at some point. Okay. You just work with tomorrow. I will just work with tomorrow. Okay. Uh, is room for a quick question? If people damage or prune mm -hmm. trees improperly, let's say cut a tree in half, it's public. What are the, how the ordinances work? What happens? There's no ordinance that prevents them from doing that. It's MGL Chapter 87. If I catch them, I can fine them 500 bucks or I can put them in jail for six months. Oh, so, wow. That's what we Huh? You're about Leah Toyota? That's, I'm talking about public trees. <laughs> that's a public tree. Yeah, public those, public are, those are public trees. Yeah, they did. They pruned one public tree, actually. They pruned one, two, maybe. They, they did the whole one. Right. One of the toilet. There, those trees are there. Those trees belong to them. To be on the sidewalk. But they're still mandated by. Only after certain amount of years. Only after certain amount of years. Really? Yeah. If they die, they have to be replaced. That's correct. But they don't have to years. maintain them in a fashion according to industry standards. Uh, that's a good question. That's somewhere buried in all those zoning I thought that was one of the things we were that, was, that we were even trying to do when they recreating the ordinances so that that would be clear. Yeah. And then it's not done, but it's one of the things that's on. It's kind of why I brought it up and trying to just check where we are. Public change. Yeah, if we keep, if we're, when we move to create uh, our own tree protection ordinance yeah. that goes beyond MGL. And incorporate right. the guidelines, you know, into that. Get that through the city council process. After we discuss it with the mayor, uh, then that is when those types of more rigorous and detailed restrictions can come into play. And are you, is someone working on that? Are you, are you is that in progress, or is that like? Let's call it in progress. Okay, well. it's in progress. Right. Thank you. Anything else? Enjoy the beautiful day. Is there a motion? Oh, uh, we want to do a recap. Yeah. Oh, yeah, recap. <laughs> to do list. I know it's your favorite part. <laughs> to do. <laughs> All right, what I captured is rich uh, continued work with Navy on the tree inventory and the complete people work for tree inventory extension. Uh, Jay and Jen are going to complete the tree guidelines to be sent to the mayor for review. By next meeting. By next meeting. That's November, that that November 16th. Uh, Rob's going to continue with the tree planting, Northampton, and I'm going to send all of you guys the draft of the report. And 
updates today. And also, just one other thing. I seem to, in the back of my head, have some recollection of a webinar about city tree swales and plant material and used in this. Let me see if I can find that. Yeah, there's all that. I mean, what what I've seen is, um, you know, it's moving. There's a lot more information moving away from perennials and more to in a municipal setting and more towards uh, shrubs because they're way, you know, it's a lot less maintenance. It's all I mean. I have like because you can mow at the end of the year. Or no, no, no. Uh, you know, you plant them and you don't have to cut them back. You don't have to. You know, they don't fall over, you don't have to you know, stake on them, you don't have to, you know. I mean, it depends on what, you know, if you have a bioswale in a, in a place that can be kind of naturalized, it's a, from a design perspective, I don't know that much, you know, about the nuts and bolts of bioswales, you know, I never designed one, or, but, um, uh, you know, they can be like wild looking, and that's okay in a certain place, but you know, on the gateway coming into a city, it, I think most cities would want it to look kind of neat and you know, not falling over the sidewalk. And, 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 so. There's a lot of spells I think that's what there are on North Street. Yeah. One of the most uh, robust networks is on Staten Island, actually. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. The city of Philadelphia has done, and, and they've made a huge commitment. Like the choice is either in older cities, like okay, do we uh, decrease, do we redo our stormwater system, you know, underground and sewer and all that stuff, or do we keep more stormwater from going in? And the city of Philadelphia has totally committed to keeping the stuff from going in. And they've like redone all their parks and every new street they paved and do these wires with them on bounds and all that stuff. It's going to be interesting. It's just going to make some jobs too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, turns into these street pits. It's interesting. I'm, I'm no expert. But it's cool. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Thank you, everyone. Thanks.